Reportedly, believers by the thousands journey to Venezuela to seek the blessings of a visionary. The sick come in need of healing. Others may hope to witness a miracle. Visionary Maria Esperanza appears to be the vortex for a whirlwind of supernatural events. Deep within the forests of Venezuela lives a woman who claims to see apparitions of the Virgin Mary. Maria Esperanza is a wife, a mother and grandmother, and by some accounts touched by the divine. Producer-director Drew Mariani. She's a prophet, she's a healer. Uh, she has the uh, gift of bilocation, uh, the ability to read souls. Author Michael Brown. If half of what they say about her is true, she's one of the major mystics, not just of our time, but of any time this century. A woman who has prophesied on any number of occasions events that have taken place uh, in exactly the, the fashion she said. On one location, she had prophesied uh, to a group of pilgrims and there. She saw two very large towers in a city. And she feared for what was to happen to these towers. A few weeks later, the bombing of the Twin Trade Towers took place. She has prophesied the deaths of the, the past three popes. I was in her presence uh, during uh, one apparition where she saw a terrible earthquake take place. Uh, about a month later, she described it to me. Uh, during the World Series, an earthquake rocked uh, California. Maria claims visitations of heavenly beings began at an early age. Her first apparition took place when she was uh, age five. At age 14, St. Teresa, the little flower, appeared to her brilliantly red rose, and she threw this rose to Esperanza. Instead of catching the rose, something pricked her right hand, and it began to bleed, and this was the onset of the stigmata. As an adult, these alleged supernatural manifestations were to be witnessed by many. Blood will erupt on her palms while she's praying the Stations of the Cross on Good Fridays. On one occasion, two doctors accompanied her and actually were there when the blood started to come from her hands. They weren't able to explain it. Her son-in-law one day saw Maria kneeling in prayer. Suddenly her head went back, she stuck her tongue out, and before his eyes, a host materialized on her tongue. Uh, the bishop himself has witnessed such phenomena. One of the most remarkable testimonies come from her children. One of the, her daughters said that she saw a light reflect on her mother and her mother rose in levitation, her feet actually off the ground at that time. All sorts of phenomena takes place. A mysterious fog uh, that appears out of nowhere, the rose petals fall from the sky, the odor of roses are said to surround her. She's a woman that has uh, been blessed with many mystical gifts and charisms. Of all her alleged gifts involving roses, one phenomenon is truly unbelievable. It's just bizarre. I mean, it really is a, an incredible phenomenon. It's very, very hard to, to accept. The presence of medical doctors uh, who have written, uh, sworn testimony uh, to what they've seen. A rose, a budded rose came through her chest and opened up. It was a brilliant, beautiful red, even touched with dew, almost as if though it was freshly picked. Drew Mariani claims a personal encounter with Maria's supernatural gifts. Reportedly, it happened during a video interview that he conducted with Maria at her home in Venezuela. He witnessed a bilocation, a being in two places at the same time. Many people have reported seeing Maria in one place when in fact she was in another. During the taping of an interview with Maria, uh, I had asked her a question and had asked her to pray for a person I had known who was in a very severe car accident. Maria. This isn't really part of our interview, but I have a question. It's about a friend. Yes. He's back in the States. He was in a bad car accident, and he's paralyzed. I, I will go to him. Where does he live? Five, maybe 10 kilometers from my home. Please, stop your camera. You will have a problem with your tape. Keep rolling. Your friend is in a dark room. He is drinking some tea, and he is wearing 
a blue shirt. I am taking his hand and I am lifting him up. When this incident was over, uh, my cameraman was very skeptical that anything at all had happened. So when we got back to the hotel room, we called to the United States, called that person, and to his surprise as well as mine, described in detail exactly what he was wearing and exactly what had happened. One of the extraordinary gifts that the Virgin Mary reportedly bestowed upon Maria Esperanza, the gift of healing, may have been witnessed by a young couple who gave birth to a very sick child named Ryan. Uh, gave birth to a little boy. Our sonograms were normal. And we had a big surprise. The little boy came out with spina bifida myelomeningocele. At the base of his spine, in the center, was his spinal cord open like an open book, uh, exposed to the air. I was devastated, really devastated. <laughs> to see that little boy, and then not knowing, you know, would he walk? You know, what kind of a life would he have? Medical doctors offered little hope, so the Hulix went searching for a miracle. Here I had this little boy with all of these complications, and I wanted to go and hopefully see Marie Esperanza, ask for her prayers and her advice, and then take it from there. Ryan was two years old when the Hulix made the pilgrimage to Venezuela in search of a cure. During the long bus ride into the countryside, the Hulix met a family therapist named Marilyn Bakeland. What I saw was a very placid, sweet little child of 23 months who obviously had spina bifida. He wasn't moving. His eyes were not focused, um, slightly crossed eyes. Right away I'm thinking, this was the trip that was going to cure their baby. They had such faith in this. I thought, oh, I hope they're not disappointed. When they reached the Esperanza home, the Hulix joined with the throngs of hopeful pilgrims. Waiting for them was an urgent message from Maria. Mother Esperanza knew we were there. She said to her daughter, tell them that already I'm sending out my assistance to, to them and that already all of his cells are changing, his blood is changing, the bones are changing, everything is already beginning. The hour had come when Maria Esperanza was to take little Ryan into her arms. She took him and she prayed with him and she ran her hand all over him. And I realized that Jesus had already begun the healing before she even touched him. She said he's been set free, set free at last, set free. It was on the bus ride home that the Hulix claimed to have witnessed a miracle. We were on the bus going back to Caracas. And Ryan immediately showed a much increased strength. It was totally amazing. It was as if. Someone had waved this magic wand, and this baby went from a retarded, placid baby to a normal two-year-old. There wasn't any doubt in my mind. This baby was cured. You could see it in his eyes that he had just been set free from this, this condition that he had been born with. And within the shortest amount of time of coming home, he was walking. And now he's just all over the place. <laughs> He's doing great. Of all the gifts Maria Esperanza claims the Virgin Mary has given her, the most profound is perhaps the gift of prophecy, because Maria says the Virgin has issued warnings for the future of mankind. The Virgin has told Maria this is the hour of decision for mankind, that a very serious moment is approaching soon. She fears that we are on the doorstep of a global war. When you least expect it, uh, be very careful, for she fears that the Soviet Union may try some sort of attack. She warns about new diseases and plagues that will kill in a matter of days instead of a matter of years. And we are at a serious turning point. He says we face a lot of turmoil and perhaps catastrophic events, but in the end, the world will be a better place and there'll be a great spiritual reawakening. As reports of healings, apparitions, visions of a dangerous future and bilocation 
being in two places at the same time. As these reports swirled around Maria Esperanza in Venezuela, another man far off was suffering in a brutal prison. His alleged crime was being a Catholic, his sentence death by freezing. It seemed only divine intervention could save him. Exiled from his native Ukraine, living now in Toronto, Canada, he claims to hold the secret to hundreds of divinely inspired prophecies. Visionary and mystic Joseph Terelia. I'm an instrument in God's hands. And there are a lot of things that I don't understand. Today, living in freedom, Joseph Terelia appears to be an ordinary family man content to while away the hours painting. But a closer look at his art and his life will reveal the anguish and triumph of a modern-day prophet. Author Michael Brown. Joseph Terelia is a truly remarkable mystic, as well as uh, a martyr. I mean, he never died, but he certainly suffered long and hard, 20 years in the Soviet prison system for being a Catholic activist in the dark, cold days of communism. Joseph Terelia's odyssey of seemingly miraculous survival, prison escapes, and reported encounters with spiritual beings began the day he was thrown into prison at the age of 19. Dr. Roman Krutsky. The reason he was placed in prisons was because of uh, the violation of the Soviet uh, code prohibiting the practice of religion. In fact, all forms of religious activity were totally abolished. The churches were uh, desecrated in many ways. In some cases, they used them as outhouses. They would uh, convert some of them into museums. Hundreds and thousands were the priests and nuns who were actually executed for their uh, religious activities. So it was a tremendously trying time. Trapped inside the monolithic Soviet prison system, Joseph had two roads to freedom, renounce his religion or escape. Joseph successfully escaped from uh, Soviet prisons nine times. He was relentless in, in uh, finding his freedom. I think one of the greatest miracles of his life is the fact that this man was never executed. They never did kill him. They tried a couple times, and they they certainly tortured him. He was put into cells that were, there wasn't even enough room to move his knees when he sat down. Cages that were cold, given only bread to eat. They found it very hard to physically control him. They repeatedly tried to break his spirit by physically damaging him. So his hands were broken five times. They tried to uh, dispose of him by putting him into a room with uh, several murderers who were armed with knives. They slit the veins in the back of the legs and just left him there. Fortunately, a guard saw this happening and he managed to get him out before he was dead. Eventually, Joseph Terelia's time ran out. Prison officials had had enough. They decided to kill Joseph by putting him in what they called a freeze cell. It was a uh, cell where they piped in the cold, frigid uh, Russian air. This is uh, 100 miles uh, northeast of Moscow. They put me in the cell. They took, uh, took away my coverings. It's hard to describe how cold it was. My eyebrows became heavy. The ends of my uh, hair began to hurt. At one point, he got up so he could get his head near this light bulb that was hanging from the ceiling for the warmth, because everything was so cold. I uh, pushed my head up against the, uh, the light to try to heat my head. The guard there saw what I was doing, and he switched off the light. Death was imminent. It seemed Joseph was about to meet his maker. The physiology of his body was following its normal course. So he lay down on the cot, body now very, very numb, and his eyelids were literally at this point frozen together. He couldn't open his eyes. As he was going through this, he was praying his final prayers, asking for the Blessed Virgin to help him in this, in this hour of travail. Joseph claims his prayers were answered and his life forever changed. 
At this very moment, I felt an intensive light uh, shining into the cell, and uh, I couldn't raise my eyebrows, but I felt I felt a, a light surround me and warm me. He opened his eyes, and there before him was a beautiful, luminous woman whom he took to be the Virgin Mary. She said, you have called for me, and I have come. Spooky and dobrota. Solitude and goodness penetrated from her. She began to speak to him and to give him prophecies about the future, a warning about a great war that may occur between Russia and China and surrounding countries. She was showing him a map of the Soviet Union of fires breaking out there. In the meantime, the prison uh, is in an uproar. Guards rush in, trying to make sense of this tremendous light. And as they opened the door of his cell, the light disappeared. They were stunned to see this man alive. He should have been frozen to death. They were equally stunned to feel the warmth, the heat in that cell. And they accused him of using yoga and all this other stuff. And he said, no, I was visited by an apparition of the Virgin Mary. Joseph was placed in a psychiatric hospital for observation, but he was far from crazy. He claims he'd forged a permanent connection with the supernatural, a connection that made him a conduit for prophecy and brought him renown throughout the world. Joseph still had years to spend behind bars, but he used his time painting and to secretly orchestrate a Ukrainian human rights movement. Reagan interviewed I uh, was quite well known throughout the world. President Reagan, uh, President Mitterrand, uh, spoke in my defense. After surviving 23 years of misery for refusing to renounce his faith, Joseph Terelia was released from prison. But his journey wasn't over. He was expelled from the Soviet Union because he was engaged in anti-communist activity with the Catholic underground, with the Christian underground in general. Uh, he also worked with oppressed, uh, persecuted Jews. And so they wanted him out of the country, and they uh, exiled him to Canada. It wasn't until he reached the West that the world learned of the magnitude of prophetic visions Joseph claims were given to him by the Virgin Mary. Joseph Tirelli's spiritual director, Bishop Roman Danilak of Toronto, Canada, he spoke before the joint houses of the Senate and of Congress with people at the Pentagon and the White House itself. He has seen the Pope uh, more than 36 times. 200 prophecies of Joseph uh, have been released by the Vatican and his visions are essentially apocalyptic in nature. There will be a great flame or fire uh, in southern Russia. A person will appear called Vladimir. He will call on Russia to destroy Israel. He has spoken of the San Andrea Fault and the Pacific Coast going to the brink. Uh, America. The southern parts of the states and the uh, coast of California. There will be uh, earthquakes and it will sink into the, uh, into the water, be covered by water. Joseph warns us that even though we may think things are peaceful, even though things may seem to be going very well in places like the Soviet Union or China, to watch out because they could be powder kegs that are ready to explode. In my mind, there is no question that the apparitions taking place in many places of the world are valid. They are things that science cannot explain and certainly cannot be explained away by uh, labels of mass hysteria. Just as the icy cold was about to take his life, Joseph Torellia claims an ethereal glowing woman saved him with warmth. He survived 23 years in a Soviet prison camp with nine years in solitary confinement and continuous unimaginable torture. However, if his prophetic visions of our future are true and they go unheeded, the worst may be yet to come.